Hey everyone, Matt here with Night Run Studio and in this cutscene tutorial video we're going to show how to add a pop-up dialogue that can be cancelled with a button press. You'll also be able to use a drop down menu to select whether it shows up at the top, middle or bottom of the screen. Let's get started. Now the first thing we're going to do is actually set up our dialogue text. So we're going to need Text Mesh Pro for this. If you haven't already downloaded it, you do need to go to Window, Package Manager, make sure to select the Unity Registry, and if you type in text, you should be able to find it. At this point, you can right click in the hierarchy, go to UI and add a canvas. I'll call this pop-up dialog canvas. At this point, you'll want to be sure to open up the canvas scalar component. And rather than constant pixel size, which makes it so that the pixels remain the same size even on a larger screen, which results in very small text, we want it to scale with screen size. So our text will always take up the same amount of the screen. Here you just want to make sure that your reference resolution matches whatever you're using in your game view. So if you go to game view, you can see that I'm in 1920 by 1080 and so I'll set that as my reference. We can then right click on the canvas, go to UI one more time and we'll add text to Text Mesh Pro. I'll call mine pop-up text. As you can see, it's showing up in the middle of the screen here and so I'm going to just move my game view over to the side so I can see what it looks like in-game while also editing over here in the scene view. I'll just put some test text in here so we can see what it looks like when there's more than a couple of words. I'll go with size 100 and just select a font here. And with that done, I'm just going to resize this so that it more or less takes up all of the space across the screen. We can center our text. If you want to, you can play with your outline. You'll see that I have just a light one on my text right now. All right, I'm just going to add a fade in and fade out animation now. So while clicked on pop up text, I'm going to go to my animation tab and hit create. All right, at this point, I'll create a new folder called Animation, and we'll call this one Pop-Up Fade In. I'm going to hit the Record button. I'm going to have this last for about half a second, so I'll go to 30 frames. In my Text Mesh Pro component, I'll click on the Vertex Color, and I'm just going to, actually, we want this one to be 100, so I'm going to make it 100. You'll see that a node appeared there. I can then go back to the very beginning, click on Color, and this time we'll set our alpha to 0. This will get us a nice fade in from 0 to 100, over half a second. Now in my animations folder, I'm just going to click on the fade in and I just want to unclick loop time so that it doesn't repeat itself over and over again. We'll then just do the same thing in reverse, creating a fade out clip this time. And this time around, we're going to go back to 30 again, but this time 30 will be an alpha of zero and the beginning will be 100. One more time, we'll want to click on that animation and set loop time to false. With that done, we can go into our scripts folder. I'm going to go into cutscenes and I'll create a C sharp script. So it's going to be called cutscene events underscore pop up dialogue. As we've been doing in our other videos, we are going to change the script so that rather than inheriting from mono behavior, it goes from cutscene element base. At this point, we can get rid of start and update and create the public override void execute. Now, the very first thing we want to do is get access to the text mesh pro we created. So we're going to add a namespace here. We'll go using TM pro. And now we need to create a variable that can actually allow us to talk to our specific text. So we'll create a serialized private field. This is just going to be a TMP text, and we're just going to call this one pop-up text. Next, we need a way to customize what the text says. So we'll make a serialized private string this time, which we'll call dialog. And I'll just add a text area to give us a little more room. Next, we want our text to actually change to match our dialog. So we'll just get our pop-up text. And we want the actual text in that text mesh pro to be equal to whatever we type into the dialog box. We're about ready to run our first test now, so let's set up the cutscene. I'm going to click on my NPC here. I'm going to create an empty game object, which I'll call cutscene underscore base. At this point, I'm going to add in a few things. We're going to add the cutscene handler. We'll add the cutscene initiator. I'll add a box collider, which we will set to trigger. And this will just be the trigger area in which once our player enters it, the dialogue will pop up. And finally, we can add the cutscene element we just created. I'm just going to drag in our pop-up text and write a message. One other little note, if you've been following along the entire series, in the last video, we set up our NPC so that he is on the player layer, and we also set our player layer not to interact with each other, so that when the player and NPC run into each other, they actually can walk through. However, at the moment, our cutscene base also took on that layer, which means our player can't trigger it. So let's just set this back to default. Now when we enter the game, we get our default text, but when the player moves within the trigger range, the text changes. Perfect, that's working nicely. First things first, let's make it so the text is not always displaying on screen. So we'll click on pop-up text, 
go to vertex color and just turn the alpha to zero. This way our text is actually always active, you just can't see it. All right, so first thing, I'm just gonna move this dialog line up here with text area. I just like them all being one line as it's a little easier to read. Then we can add a new serialized private field, and this one will be an animator, which we'll call anim. Now I'll just head to execute, and here we can get our animator to play the fade in. You'll notice here, I'm just gonna pop into my animator in Unity, that these currently have whatever I called the animation. I'm just gonna simplify them so that they are now called fade in and fade out. You can also see here that fade in is currently the default setting. So it's, it's going to just play at the very beginning automatically, which we won't want. So I'm just gonna create a new state here, which I'll call idle, and we'll set that as the default state. Now we can call fade in and fade out from our script whenever we want to, but the rest of the time it's just gonna hang out in idle. Now then we can set our animator to play the fade in animation. And then we also need a way to fade out. So I'm gonna add back our update method. And here I'm just gonna always check to see if the input, and in this case, we're gonna look for a button being pressed down. So when we do push that button, we want our animator to play fade out. Now for anyone who missed the earlier video where we set up our interact button, you can just go to edit, down to project settings. We'll click on the input manager. And here you can just take any of these buttons at all. And I just created one, which I called interact, and I set it up to happen when I push the K key. Now we can test this again. And when we enter the trigger area, perfect fades in. And when I press the key K, it fades back out. And at this point, there's a small problem with our setup, and that's just that when I enter, if I push K without ever triggering the actual cutscene, it will cause it to fade out, which will make it briefly appear and then fade out again, which obviously we don't want happening. To fix this, we're just gonna add a Boolean variable, which will serve as a flag so that we can only fade out the text if it's actually already on. So here we'll just make a private bool called isTextActive. Now, right after we fade in the text, we'll let it know that the text is in fact active. And then we can just add here, after our input press, we'll add a second check, which is just that it only works if text is active. So now we just wanna add the feature so that there's a drop down menu, so we can select whether the text will show up at the top, middle, or bottom of our screen. So I'm just gonna double click on pop up text. And now what we just wanna do is find out which X and Y positions are gonna serve us best as our top, middle, and bottom positions. I'm gonna start by zeroing mine out You'll notice that my box doesn't quite fit properly then, which just means I sized it incorrectly. So I'm just gonna make it so that when it's set to zero, it fills the space in the middle. Next, I'll bring it up to the top. You'll notice the X is zero and the Y is somewhere around 425, which means I can probably set my Y for the bottom position also somewhere around negative 425. All right, so essentially what we wanna do is before we fade in our text, we want to set its position. To do this, I'm actually gonna create a separate method. We could do it right inside of execute, but I like to keep my methods clean and often only serving single purposes. So we'll make a special one here just for the position of our text. We'll then call it up here in execute. So we'll just make a local variable here for its rect transform, and we'll start off by finding it. We'll just have it look right on the pop-up text and find the rect transform. Now we have the ability to talk to it in order to move it around. And in order to do that, we just need to get the rect transform and tell it that its anchored position is gonna be set to a new vector too. In this case, let's try 0, 425, which was our top position. Now we can do another quick check and sure enough, it moves it up to the top. Excellent. So now we've got our top position, but we're gonna to need to do this for the middle and bottom as well. So we'll set our middle to 0, 0 and our bottom to 0, negative 425. Next, we just have to find a way to toggle between these at will. Now, in order to create our drop-down menu, we're going to make a public enum, which we'll call text position. And you'll notice that I'm down below all of the brackets for my regular script. And here we'll add the top, middle, and bottom as options. By doing that, we've essentially created a new variable type. So we can come up here and create a serialized private field. And now the variable will be of type text position, and we'll just call it text position. Now, just quickly, I'm going to grab my pop-up text variable here and I'm just gonna move it down below the animator. This is just an organizational thing. It just keeps my components together and my regular variables separate as well. All right, let's put our enum to work now. So in this case, we'll make a switch of type text position, and now we'll give some curly brackets where we can define the different cases that are gonna come up. Now, the first case will be that the text position is at the top, and if that's the case, then we just wanna use this line here in order to set its position to the top. We'll then write break, which will end at the switch so that it doesn't check any of the other cases, but just moves on. We can then do the same thing for the middle position, pasting in our middle position, anchored position, and break. And then one more time for the bottom position. All 
All right, we'll run a quick test now. I'll click on my cutscene base element and let's have it appear at the bottom. And now things should be working perfectly. All right, I hope you found this one helpful. If you have, please be sure to like or subscribe to the channel. Also, just leave a comment down below. Let me know what other cutscene elements you'd like to see for this system. Till next time, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.